In today's third and final sample of the World Vegetable Center's International Vegetable Training Course, Dr. Derek Barchenger, World Veg Vegetable Breeder, presents how to develop A lines and B lines for breeding hybrid peppers with CMS. Okay, so now we will start part three in our lecture series um, on the use of CMS or sterility systems and hybrid seed production in pepper. And the, the last section is on the development of A lines and B lines for the CMS system in pepper. So um, I thought I would start out by showing you an example of how hybrid seed is produced using the sterility system. So you can see here in this upper left image, a greenhouse, and this is where the A lines and the B and the C lines are grown um, so that they can be used to produce hybrids. And so you want to eliminate any pollinating insects such as bees that could cross pollinate your flowers. So, um, you usually grow these in rows at a rate of four to one. So four females for every one male uh, row. And you can see here in this image, this, uh, this person is collecting flowers from the C line. And these are your female A lines. And you can always tell that the A line uh, is the A line because it's taller. It's not putting any energy right now into producing flowers or functional pollen, so it's usually vigorous and quite tall. So here, this 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 is the, the collection of flowers. Here they are taking these flowers and removing the the pollen grains. So they're doing that by taking some uh, thin cloth over a cup and then rubbing the flowers against this cloth, as you can see here in this image. And at the end, what you have is a large bulk of pollen. So um, what we see here in this picture is the pollination, the cross-pollination of the A line using the bulked C line pollen. So what these, these people are using is a, is a ring. Uh, here you can see an example in the left side of the slide of a ring that has a little reservoir of which you can put the pollen, and then very rapidly you can touch the stigma of the female flower. Um, so you can see here these, these, uh, these people are pollinating in groups, so they have one person on each side of the row, and they're rapidly pollinating as quickly as, as they can. So where can you find a B line? So although we use the term A line, B line, and C line, Actually, the B line is the most critical and difficult line to develop. So the B line has the genotype N, meaning normal cytoplasm, and is homozygous recessive at all RF loci, but it produces pollen. So most public sector breeding programs likely have access to A, B, and C lines. Uh, the World Vegetable Center distributes uh, A, B, and C lines regularly, you can also find them uh, from other institutions in the U.S., in Europe, and in South Korea. But how do we determine if a line is a B line? So probably the, the best way to do is to conduct a test cross. So here I have three examples of test crosses that could be done. So in each example, the female parent is an A line. It is a known A line. And so in the first example here, the parent has S cytoplasm and is homozygous recessive at the, or we don't know. All we know is that it is at least one allele is dominant for the RF gene. In the second example here, we, the, the, the male parent has normal cytoplasm. And again, we don't know the exact status of the RF gene, but it is at least dominant at one allele. And in the third scenario here, uh, again, the, the has a normal cytoplasm. The male has normal cytoplasm, but is homozygous recessive at all, all RF alleles. So here is the progeny, the genotypes of the progeny. So S, big RF, little RF, 
s big rf little rf s little rf little rf so as you might expect these first two cases the progeny are fertile because they have a rf gene restoring fertility and only this third case has sterility so this is the type of test crossing that you would do to find a beeline so where do beelines come from well you can search your breeding collections uh, using test crosses to an a-line or molecular markers ideally you're doing both first you would scan a large pool or a large collection of germplasm using molecular markers and then you validate your results using test crosses that we showed in the previous slides so in this scenario you would first amplify the line would need to amplify 140 base pair using the scar 130 marker which we discussed at length in the previous lecture part two and then it would need to amplify recessive alleles at all the rf gene markers so again we also discussed these markers in part two and then in your test crosses the progeny would need to be sterile all offspring would need to be sterile and you would test cross again to a known a line and if it, if a line meets all three of these requirements then it is most likely a b line however there are some serious limitations to b line development um, again normal cytoplasm is maternally inherited so it's easier in that sense where the progeny of a single line will always have normal cytoplasm and it has to be recessive at restore or fertility loci. And each of these have Mendelian inheritance. So, but we don't really know exactly how many RF genes are required for fertility and how many are functional. So this is a bit complex. And you have to identify these components separately. So in our test, we've searched uh, large sections of germplasm and about and B lines are quite rare at about eight, less than 8% in our test. So when you look, when we go to the gene bank and we get, you know, a large number of lines, I think we did this test uh, on over a thousand lines and only 8% were, were B lines. Um, so this is not only a challenge in when developing B lines, but also when removing resistance genes or other traits of interest into a B line background. So likely, if you find the source of resistance to a key disease, it's probably not a B line. It's more than likely a, a C line. So when you cross that resistant line to your B line, you're going to be moving in RF genes with that trait. So then you have to separate those two out. So that's how that's some ways briefly how you can find a B line. So now how do we find an A line? So as a reminder, the genotype of an A-line is S, sterile cytoplasm, and homozygous recessive RF. And there are several ways to get an A-line, so hybrid cultivars in the market, uh, mutation breeding, interspecific hybrids, again, screening germplasm, and then requesting lines from public institutions like World Vegetable Center. We have uh, a panel of A-lines that we can share with you upon request. So once you have an A-line, I'm sorry, once you have a B line, making an A line is relatively simple. You just need to back cross. So breaking a hybrid to make an A line. So if a commercial hybrid was developed using the CMS system, its parents were S, ster sterile cytoplasm, homozygous recessive RF, by N, homozygous dominant RF or C line. So the genotype of the F1 is S, which is maternally inherited, as we mentioned, and, reset, uh, and heterozygote at the RF loci. So the F2 will segregate in a 3 to 1. So you take an F1 hybrid that you purchase at a, uh, a seed shop, you self-pollinate it, you get an F2 population, and it will segregate 3 to 1 here. So of course, all the progeny will have the S cytoplasm, so you only need to focus on the RF genes. And so you can see here in this easy Punnett square, one out of uh, three to one ratio here, the red will be, uh, they will produce pollen, and the green one here, it will be sterile. You can also use mutation breeding. So there's radiation, or gamma rays, or, or chemical using EMS mutagens to induce random mutations in the genome. Uh, these can cause mutations in the mitochondrial as well as nuclear genomes. 
And this has been used in the past by researchers in China for sure. Um, irradiation is likely the better option of the two because it can cause simple base pair substitutions. You find a lower frequency of mutations and non-functionalization of target genes, minimizing unintended mutations, right? So if you're looking for a single trait like sterility, you only want to target that trait. I, you're not wanting to target a large number of traits or a large number of genes. You really only want to focus on one gene. So that's why uh, radiation is, is probably the better method. Of course, you can also do interspecific hybridizations, which is quite easy. And likely the original source of CNMS in pepper was the result of a natural interspecific hybridization, as we mentioned in, in part two, between capsicum anum and capsicum fortescens. Again, I also mentioned in part two that you can cross Chacoense by capsicum anum to develop CMS, um, although this is not used at a commercial level. And then, of course, capsicum anum by capsicum baccatum also results in a high level of sterility. So these are other ways you can develop A-lines in your breeding program. Of course, screening germplasm, but again, likely very rare in germplasm collections because germplasm housed in gene banks is based on seed regeneration. So if a line is sterile, it is likely not being regenerated. And a lot of gene bank staff are not necessarily familiar with the CMS system. Uh, and so they wouldn't know that they would need to cross that sterile line to a B line to maintain the seed. Identification of A lines or lines with S cytoplasm is facilitated by the use of markers followed by back crossing to a known B line. So this is why the development and identification of B lines is critically important. You have to have your B line in place before you start your A line development. So this has been a very brief uh, lecture on the development of A lines and B lines in chili or pepper for your breeding program. Again, we tried to keep all of these lectures quite short so that they would be easily downloadable no matter what your Wi-Fi situation is. But if you have questions or would like more information, again, my email address is on the screen. Thank you.